Good morning again and um, welcome to our Scotland Destination Net Zero event. I'm Janie Newman, Visit Scotland's a Sustainable Tourism Manager, and I'm incredibly excited to see you all here and get this event started. We will start on a range of housekeeping issues, but first of all, thank you for being very patient with them as we got you through the registration process. The safety and security of everyone here today is of the utmost importance to us. And we want you to feel comfortable, safe and relaxed about coming along today. So you'll notice a few measures in place to do just that. And thank you to our events team and the venue for all the things they've done. A few things to point out. We'd really appreciate if you could wear your face covering when you're queuing, moving around, getting teas and coffees. Obviously, if you're at the tables, um, you can remove the face covering if you feel comfortable to do so. Something we're all used to these days, um, but please wash your hands regularly, and it's important to keep a safe distance from other people. Also to note, we are recording this event, but the focus will be very much on stage, and we'll share the recording on our website afterwards. Um, the fire alarms and evacuation, and um, there are no scheduled fire alarms to take place today, so if you hear anything, the fire warning will be a siren sound. Um, and in the event of the fire alarm, there's a fire exit just behind this door or down um, the way you came. The escalators and the lifts won't be working in the event of that, so please do take the stairs. And the assembly point is just across the road in front of the um, NCP car park. Um, facilities, the ladies, gents, and accessible toilets are on floor two, three, and five. So you just have to head up here. Um, so you can take the escalator up. And then just in case you're like me looking for the escalator down, there isn't one. You have to take the steps down or take the lift back down. Um, Wi-Fi, you'll see the Wi-Fi um, noticed on the wall, so it's not guest, but S-C-A-Z underscore Wi-Fi, and there's, it's not password protected, so you can log on to that. So please do get social, um, as we said, and do add to social media using the hashtags on the screen, Destination at Zero, COP26, and Climate Action. Um, it'd be great if you can share any comments, experiences, images, um, if we can ask you not to share or mention the location um, or identify the location, any photographs, um, it's just to be um, extra um, um, careful about any attracting any attention and uh, getting any protesters to the site. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get on to what we're all here for. Would you please welcome our chairman, John Thursday, to the stage to open our event. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much indeed for being here with us this morning for this event, Scotland Destination Net Zero, uh, and a, a very warm welcome to Glasgow. There are more world leaders in Glasgow at the moment and more national delegations in the city than have ever gathered in any city in any part of the United Kingdom ever in history before. And they are here, as we are, uh, because of climate change and of the need to start taking action. And we need to start taking action now. We need to reduce our emissions, that's obvious. But we also need, I think, to change our behaviour and the way we do things. And for these two weeks, when the eyes of the world are on COP26 and Glasgow, we have an opportunity to start on that journey. As so many people have said, and as Her Majesty the Queen said, I think, most eloquently of all, business as usual is simply no longer an option. And that is as true for the visitor economy as it is for any other economic activity. The challenge is immense, and there's no getting away from that. The hospitality industry is still suffering from the after effects of lockdowns and the pandemic. Many businesses are still in recovery mode, and I absolutely recognize that. But I would say, as well as being an immense challenge, this is also a tremendous opportunity, a tremendous opportunity to make change and a tremendous opportunity to do things in a new way and to attract new clients to come here to Scotland. 
And I think, therefore, the challenge that is before us is not only to look for the new technologies, and there will be many new technologies that will be required over the years ahead, but also to look at new products, new ways of packaging what we do, new ways of attracting people here. It's what I've called greening the product. And it's not necessarily about huge changes to the product, but it's about behavioral changes to the way in which we go about enjoying those products and ways in which uh, people who come here enjoy Scotland. So yes, lots of challenges, but also lots of opportunities. <clears throat> I don't underestimate that challenge and the scale of it, but the hardest step to take in any endeavour is always the first step. And I'm delighted to say that at Visit Scotland we took that first step a couple of years ago and the journey has now begun. And I hope with today's event we'll be able to invite many in the industry to join us on that journey on the way forward. The, <clears throat> the COVID-19 impact, impact has also made people pause and think about the future of the environment, their impact on it and how we use it. Today, Visit Scotland is stepping up to its commitment. Along with the United Nations World Tourism Organization and other industry leaders, we have helped to draft the Glasgow Declaration on Climate Action in Tourism, which is being launched today. In fact, right now, actually, across at the SEC in the Blue Zone as part of the COP26 activity. The Glasgow Declaration is an urgent and global call for commitment to a decade of climate action in tourism. And we encourage national and international partners and businesses to sign up to it. We are signatories to the Declaration and are already working towards meeting the government's ambitious target of reducing emissions by 75% by 2030 and reaching net zero by 2045. Our visitors also have a part to play, and we aim to inspire, to guide, and to inform current and future visitors to enjoy memorable and meaningful experiences and value Scotland's environment and communities, enjoying them responsibility. And that's what's at the heart of our responsible tourism campaigns, the two structures of sustainability in the environment and sustainability of communities. This, we hope, will alleviate pressure on the honeypot areas and ensure the economic benefits of tourism are evenly spread across the country throughout the year. And my personal plea is slow tourism. I think we should think about travel, stay, enjoy, rather than rush, stay, rush. I think staying put and enjoying where you are will be an important part of the change that takes place. Projects such as Scotland's UNESCO Trail and Destination Net Zero have sustainability at their heart, providing a platform on which tourism businesses can align and showcase their sustainable credentials. We're providing visitors with inspiration and advice to help them make travel choices that are more environmentally friendly and to educate them how to behave responsibly when enjoying Scotland's world-famous offering. We're sharing ideas and inspiration on our website, via social media, and through our marketing that highlight the best of Scotland's green offering. It's about encouraging a change in behavior in the way that visitors engage, interact, and explore Scotland. Moving away from the checklist culture that I just referred to and truly embracing the destination in a more meaningful and slow way. It's also about thinking differently about how we promote and deliver our product offering and combining this into one united front where we recognize that we're all on this journey together. By making sustainable travel choices, we can help protect our landscapes while at the same time boosting local economies and delivering the diversity of the areas we visit. And we should never forget that tourism is a force for good and the economic impact it delivers in many of our remoter areas is extremely welcome. The trick is to get the economic benefit for the minimum social and environmental consequences. So I'd like to end this morning 
uh, with a film, which we'll have in just a moment, that's called Tread Lightly. And it's part of our new environmental strand to our global marketing campaign, Scotland is Calling. And it was shown in some of Scotland's key markets, like the UK, Europe, USA. It aligns very much with our Responsible Tourism campaign launched earlier this year. And it's aimed at encouraging visitors to respect communities and the environment when exploring Scotland. Simply put, being a responsible traveller is about maximising the positive impact on the places you visit, both environmentally, socially and economically. It's about treading lightly, but it's about enjoying wisely as well. So, as I close, I invite the industry to join us on this journey. I believe the industry is capable of tremendous innovation, ability to adapt, and the great ability to overcome the challenge, which is why, for me, the opportunity is far greater than the challenge. So let's end with a film, please. Being here makes all the steps taken worth it, and the next steps even more important. I choose my path without impacting on our earth, the beat of a drum, the pulse of a club, the warmth of a fire, the taste of the sea in a place you feel like you've escaped to, that still feels like home. A home protected for future generations, ready to explore. Scotland doesn't do things by small measures, unless it's whiskey. So we've charged our glasses, and our cars, and our bikes. If you're hungry for new experiences, thirsty for the unknown, and you want to go further, faster, slower, higher, deeper, louder, but still tread lightly upon our earth, then step forward. Scotland is calling. Thank you, John. And well, I hope that set the scene and for why we're here today and provided some inspiration for taking action. So let's find out a bit more about Destination Net Zero and the program that will be launched soon. Um, to please welcome our Director of Industry and Destination Development, Rob Dixon, to the stage. Thank you, Jeannie. Good morning, uh, everybody. It's always tricky to follow something like that, isn't it? What am I going to say that can beat uh, some pictures of Scotland and, and demonstrate so ably the challenge that we face? Um, being here during uh, COP26 with Global Minds on Climate Change and the Spotlight on Scotland does provide, uh, as John said, a unique opportunity to consider the role that tourism has to play. We are a clear contributor to the global climate crisis and we stand to suffer some of its consequences but we have a part to play, a significant part to play um, in addressing the challenges we face. It is uh, often positioned as the start of something, but, but I do want to acknowledge that for 20 years or more, we've had accreditation for sustainable and green businesses. And, and so those steps that have been taken, those small steps do put us uh, in a better place than would otherwise be the case. But of course, there is much more to do. And now it's more important than ever for tourism to step up and show how the sector can be a part of the global solution. Together, we must take that ambitious stand on climate change if we want to preserve and enhance Scotland's natural and cultural heritage, um, regenerating a thriving environment which benefits, as John quite rightly said, communities, businesses and our visitors. So, we're asking the Scottish tourism sector, businesses, destinations and partners to prioritise responsible, low carbon growth and join us on that journey to destination net zero. The good news is we're here to help and this is perhaps surprising in this uh, time and even better news is there's some funding available as well. Um, I want to walk you through uh, the key and I do think connected pieces of what is quite a complex jigsaw puzzle. Um, but can I start by taking you back, uh, not quite five years, to the Paris Declaration in December 2021, a pre-Brexit, pre-COVID, pre-face mask, pre-social distancing uh, period. I'm not quite sure if we can 
cast our minds back to it, such has been the impact of the last 18 months. Um, and it would be fair to say that we have quite rightly and understandably been somewhat distracted by events in the intervening five years. And whilst I don't wish to diminish the impact and the challenges we face post-pandemic and post-Brexit, or ignore the opportunities that are also presented by them, and I assure you we will do all we can to respond to these challenges and opportunities, I think it is important to be absolutely clear that the greatest long-term challenge requiring the greatest long-term effort is our response to climate change. That must transcend our activity and be at the heart of our strategic and operational work in the years ahead. In short, we must be clear about our priorities and are just the use of our resources to deliver on them. Climate change, of course, continues to be a major global crisis which requires action to be taken at a scale and a pace not seen before in order to avoid its worsening impacts. The government's targets are now well understood in Scotland. Um, in the Scottish Government emissions uh, target by 2045 with interim targets of 75% uh, reduction by 2030 uh, are, are well understood in Scotland and, and very much part of how we focus on this challenge. But the transition to a low carbon economy must continue to be a priority focus for Scotland's green recovery post-COVID. As a tourism sector, Scotland Outlook 2030 sets a clear ambition for a low carbon, responsible tourism future. It's important the sector takes action and demonstrate its part of the solution. As somebody who joined Visit Scotland only two and a half months ago and inevitably had a look at Outlook 2030 as part of trying to understand what, what the wider picture for tourism was, the currency of Outlook 2030 launched in the weeks preceding uh, the outbreak of the pandemic, I think is still entirely right, entirely valid, and something that we should hold true to because of the work that was done in establishing it and, and developing a strategy which I think uh, is as strong as any in Scotland. The Tourism COVID Recovery Plan includes, quite rightly, a focus on green recovery to build back a more resilient industry and set businesses on the path to a net zero future. And one of the plan's funded projects is the net zero pathway for Scotland's tourism industry. As John has outlined uh, for Visit Scotland, responsible tourism is at the heart of our strategic framework and a key pillar. Um, and he spoke about tourism declares and the Glasgow Declaration being signed today. The transition to net zero is a journey which needs to bring a wide range of participants along who are all at very, very different starting points with varying resources, including their capability, their capacity, and the financial resources uh, at hand. But in order for everybody to move in the right direction at the pace required and ensuring that maximum impact and benefit, there are some key questions that we need to answer in the first instance. For example, where are we now? Do we have a map? Where are we going? And what does net zero tourism future look like? Uh, and shortly, Chris, our Tourism Insights Manager, will provide his perspective on these two questions. And then how are we going to get there? What are the must-do activities? And I hope our panel session today will look at the key areas of energy, transport, food waste in more detail, as well as the support and benefits that sustainable certification can provide. But what's stopping us? What barriers to taking action need to be addressed? What enablers need to be put in place? And in order to make progress, we need to recognize and acknowledge the barriers to action so these can be addressed and the right support and enablers put in place. But all of that notwithstanding, we need to get moving and we need to focus on actions. And the answers to these questions, while they may be complex and will vary depending on whether we're considering this from a business, destination or visitor's perspective, nonetheless, they'll be key to move together in the right direction, ensuring a maximum benefit and impact. We understand how hard the last 18 months have been 
incredibly hard for this sector. Impacted by the pandemic and a range of other challenges uh, with much time, energy and resources needed to focus on business survival over the course of the next few months in this winter and recovery thereafter. But it's important that Scottish businesses and destinations make low carbon growth part of their recovery journey from the outset in the coming weeks and months. By taking action, a business can not only reduce costs and build resilience, but it will meet the increasing consumer demand for sustainable business focus. As I said earlier, the good news is we're here to help businesses along the way. So today I really want to highlight the Destination Net Zero programme, a programme worth almost £4 million to support Scotland's tourism industry on the journey to net zero is beginning to get underway. The Destination Net Zero programme will provide support to tourism businesses and destinations as they transition to that greener, more sustainable future. It's a key strand in the Scottish Government's £25 million COVID-19 tourism recovery programme. And the programme is being delivered on, part, on behalf of uh, the Scottish Tourism Emergency Response Group by Scottish Enterprise, Visit Scotland, by Highlands and Islands Enterprise uh, and South of Scotland Enterprise with other partners. And I want to pay tribute to those organisations and the time and effort that they've put in to bringing this programme together and the way that they've managed to get it to land in a space at this particular time, which I think will genuinely mean that it aids our recovery as well as our uh, travel to that net zero destination. The objectives are very clear. Uh, you can see them on this slide. We're trying to develop robust evidence uh, in order to have a more solid baseline. We certainly want to provide support to businesses, um, but we need to engage with businesses and destinations at pace. And the purpose of the programme and the timescale for the programme is deliberately designed to try and uh, build momentum and the pace that we think is necessary. We certainly want to work in partnership um, and I think the way the programme has been put together by a number of agencies demonstrates uh, a, a great deal of uh, appetite for that. Um, but fundamentally, we need more businesses to be playing their part and doing what they can to deliver on these objectives. Some highlights, uh, I think, worth mentioning. In terms of research, a key piece of activity is the industry research to identify current attitudes and behaviour towards a net zero economy, as well as opportunities to successfully encourage action and measurement of progress over the coming years. That research is currently ongoing uh, with over 300 businesses. Uh, some of you may already have contributed uh, to that work and we expect the full results early in December and we look forward to sharing those with you. Awareness and engagement is critical and our online net zero portal at visitscotland.org launched last week with key advice to get you started and with further advice and information to be added, um, we think is critical in raising awareness and allowing simple uh, engagement. Of course, advice and support will also be provided by our own engagement team and the teams within our partners, uh, and that will leverage, we hope, existing support. And we're developing a programme of support, including webinars with partners and best practice case studies in order that we make access to the information um, as straightforward as is possible. Turning to supporting places, um, Recharge in Nature is a nature-based tourism recovery project led by Nature Scott, which seeks to encourage more people to engage with nature and learn about the impact of climate change, uh, whilst, um, as the uh, film showed, recharging their electric vehicle or cycling using an e-bike. The Destination Net Zero Climate Action Pilot Project to support Scottish destinations develop their climate action plans will seek expressions of interest shortly and we look forward to launching that and the interest from that to follow. We've been al already we have been supporting businesses. The rebuild of the Fair Isle uh, Bird Observatory received almost £200,000 of net zero funding in order to create a new sustainable and energy efficient building uh, on the island. The transformation of Nevis Range 
a project including plans to create a new hotel and bunkhouse um, at the Loch Arbour Mountain Resort has received half a million pounds of funding. And Hospitality Net Zero sees us working in partnership with Zero Waste Scotland and Scottish Enterprise aimed at businesses within Glasgow City region to work uh, with Zero Waste Scotland and Scottish Enterprise um, to encourage SME hospitality businesses to focus on food waste reduction, providing consultation and support to achieve this. We've got further uh, projects to launch, and there'll be announcements in the coming weeks about EV charge point uh, funding um, of up to £5,000 uh, for each charge point, of carbon reduction advice and grant funding of up to £10,000 for each business, and of sustainable tourism certification grants, where we hope to reduce the cost of the certification process to support businesses achieve that. And that funding will be delivered by Visit Scotland and announcements will be uh, very soon on those uh, activities. I've used the word frequently, but it's absolutely clear we all need to work in partnership to shape a clear route map for the sector, engage industry and destinations and our visitors, ensuring that bold steps are taken on this journey to net zero and kick-starting a decade and beyond of climate action. I hope this is not just a presentation delivered for COP26, aiming to hit uh, all the right notes. You can tell me afterwards if you think I've hit the right notes or not. And jointly, we must ensure that this is catalyzing a moment for the tourism sector in Scotland. And make no doubt, we need to focus on taking action now with the hard work continuing long after COP26 is over. I genuinely believe that key to making progress together is to share our stories and to collaborate. Please make sure that you share your story to your customers and your partners who want to travel more sustainably. Let people know what you're doing and that you've committed to this journey and help them to reduce their carbon emissions whilst visiting and whilst working with you. Sharing your journey to become more responsible to be a low carbon business with other businesses in your sector or your destination and beyond is key as it will support others on their journey. It will support them to go faster and further in that collective effort to get to net zero. Scotland is already considered a leader in the field of responsible tourism, not necessarily because of what we have achieved but because of some of the imagination and flair and thought that's going into what we will do. A responsible and low carbon approach to rebuilding and growing tourism in Scotland has to be our priority. And there is no time to sit back and hope that someone else, but not us, will deliver. I came uh, 30 years ago to a conference in Glasgow uh, to talk to a COSLA conference. Um, for those of you uh, who've managed to escape familiarity with COSLA, a local government conference in Scotland, um, at which I was promoting recycling. And I was taken gently aside by the leader of two large councils in Scotland and said, that's all very well, but it's just too expensive and, and we'll not be doing it at the moment. Well, 30 years ago, recycling was in its outset. And today we look at much of what's in front of us as an outset. And I wonder in 30 years time, if you can look back as a business uh, or an organization and say, hmm, I remember being in Glasgow during COP26 and it was the start of what we did right. And it was the start of making a difference. So I hope that what we start to do uh, at this time with COP26 here in Scotland and specifically here in Glasgow does inspire future generations to say that Scottish tourism led the way and made a difference. I believe we can, I hope we will. And thank you, and I hope you find today's session interesting, but above all, motivating.
Thank you, Rob, um, for that inspiration and the overview of the destination net zero and the support for tourism and destinations to transition to that greener, more sustainable net zero future. And as Rob said, more details will be announced soon. So next, we want to take a closer look at those first steps on that journey of where we are now and where are we going. So um, please welcome our Senior Tourism Insights Manager, Chris Greenwood. Good morning. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to be uh, here with you today and in person, which I think is a recognition of the direction that we're all traveling uh, in terms of the recovery of tourism uh, within Scotland. Uh, my name is Chris Greenwood. I'm the Senior Tourism Insight Manager uh, at Visit Scotland uh, with responsibility to understand uh, everything from uh, trends, the environment, the economy, uh, and everything in between. And, I want to take just a, a short moment uh, to review some of the recent consumer research uh, that we've been uh, undertaken on some of the attitudes towards sustainable travel uh, and also what it means for, for Scottish tourism. So I'm sure, like me, you've seen the reports, the media stories, um, the, 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 the hope, thankfully, kind of corroborative uh, research that's taken place around the world by you know, esteemed organizations like you know, Ipsos, uh, the, the, the Pew uh, Center, that shows that there is a, a consistent and growing concern amongst society about climate change and the environment. And, and this is something that's been growing year after year. But we've also had the pandemic, and that's been an opportunity for people to reprioritize their views on uh, many things. Um, I think there was a period of time uh, last year where people saw the, the reduced traffic, the perceived uh, improvement in air quality, the uh, preponderance of, of wildlife and the natural environment. Um, people were, were, were realizing that you know, small things can make a big difference. So that opportunity to pause, evaluate, and revalue has kind of followed through in, in, in behaviors. And the attitude that people are taking towards the environment is, is continuing to grow. But what the research also shows is that there's a disparity between what people say and what people do, that intention, action, behavior. Now, I would argue that uh, the intention is there, but it's lost in the noise of modern life. If people are asked, what do you think about the environment? Do you care about the environment? Naturally, the majority will say yes. But when you ask somebody about what do you think, what are your priorities for tourism, it comes down to many other things, including value, uh, products, accessibility, all these kinds of things. So this has led to uh, a disparity in terms of you know, people seeking and looking for uh, advice and putting the onus back onto the industry for them to provide the products and guidance that's going to take people through to make the right choice and align their values with those of what the industry is presenting to them. So it's all about that co corporate consumer brand of ethics and matching up the right customer with the right product. When we look at sustainable tourism and responsible tourism, and as we've heard, indeed, it is a central tenant of the National Tourism Strategy, which was launched only last year. But what we can see is that the projected growth in international global travel uh, is exponential. And, and you know, up until uh, 2030, we're going to see uh, a, a expanding growth, particularly in uh, new and emerging markets. But that projected growth um, thankfully appears to be on the back of a shifting attitude amongst uh, consumers and that move from the traditional transactional attitudes of buying those elements of travel, accommodation, activity, attraction, through to more transformational ones and understanding that people's behavior actually has an impact. When you go to a destination and engage with a community, you're going to have an impact. So if you leave your rubbish there, it's going to be left with that community. If you go there and uh, are antisocial in some way, that's going to have an impact on that community. And therefore, people's behaviors are now being reflected in that. And we talk about transformational travel. 
But what we do find, though, is that recent research that we've had on uh, domestic tourism has found that attitudes towards uh, climate and sustainability tend to match those wider global opinions. And, and these are uh, our domestic visitors, so you know, visitors uh, resident in Scotland, rest of the UK coming to, coming to Scotland. But again, that say-do dichotomy uh, remains. Now, as I said, I believe that uh, when you're asked, do you care about the environment, people will say yes. But then when you ask, what is it that um, you know, prioritizes your travel, it goes back to, you know, it's about value for money. It's about proximity and availability of attractions and activities. And also user-generated reviews are lead factors that have been identified as being the key areas people think of and prioritize in terms of a Scottish holiday. Now people are concerned about the environment, they are concerned about the threat to wildlife, and you know, up until 2019, uh, uh, 2020, we were talking about the concerns of over-tourism and how do we address the issues of seasonality and geographic distribution. But we are finding that behaviors are changing. Behaviors of families and younger demographics tend to reflect that localism uh, about reducing uh, carbon emissions through traveling more, eating local, seeking out um, local produce, and taking part in things like active uh, and public transport to reduce carbon miles. So there is a movement forward, but again, it's getting that connection between uh, the movement of uh, visitors and their desire to seek advice and support and products that reflects their values and the product available uh, within the industry. And again, it's just matching the values that you have within your business, the ethos that you're adopting to become more sustainable and responsible into that of the visitor itself. So where are we going? It's clear that the actions consumers need to take uh, to become more responsible travelers um, are shown here. You know, it's about staying more sustainably. It's about supporting rewilding. You know, it's about buying local. Um, and this is reflected in uh, the marketing uh, and activity that Visit Scotland is undertaking along uh, with broadly with the, the tourism industry in terms of slow travel, shopping local, and conscientious behaviors uh, and being aware of the implications that a visitor has in a destination. So we know what we need to do and people are aware of it, but it's being able to push forward and be bold in those messages that we're sending out. What is it that we're likely to lose if climate change targets aren't met and the impacts uh, are felt uh, within the environment, and how do they filter through into the industry? Well, we know that we're going to be experiencing uh, increased storm events. Um, we're going to see greater coastal erosion and uh, habitat loss and change in uh, uh, wildlife. These are things that we know. And these are going to have implications on our natural and built environment. So everything from adventure tourism, think of the ski industry, through to the, the, the golf sector, and the Lynx courses. These are all gonna require product adaptation over the years if we don't meet the targets that we're setting ourselves. And it's going to be more broadly across the whole uh, tourism sector that are gonna to have to see about mitigation and adaptation to meet the challenges that we're facing forwards. Now we have to remember that Scotland's brand is intrinsically linked to our natural and built environment. We talk about it being human, dramatic, enduring, we look at the things that people think of when they think of Scotland and inspire them to come here. The natural landscapes, the built heritage, the castles, the culture. And it's maintaining these that is going to drive forwards on Scotland remaining the emotional and awe-inspiring uh, destination uh, that it is, both now and into the future. But as we've heard, it's not just about words, it's about action. And to uh, highlight on some of the things that we've heard from Rob in terms of uh, what Visit Scotland's undertaking, I want to highlight some of the projects that, that we're uh, about to undertake, which is about to measure, analyze, and advise on sustainable tourism. 
Firstly, there's our carbon emissions baseline project. This is a, a project that is going to uh, measure uh, the uh, carbon emissions for the tourism sector within Scotland and compare that to other industries uh, within the Scottish economy. This is going to form our baseline, which obviously we will then be able to repeat in the future to see how uh, our uh, uh, implications of, of, of activity uh, are making a difference. But it goes further than that. It also looks at the carbon emissions based on our key markets, specifically our international long, long haul, and see how do we balance the, uh, the benefits that we get from uh, responsible tourism in terms of the uh, economic and uh, social benefits that come from tourism, along with the environmental uh, uh, benefit of being able to identify which markets are the most sustainable. As I said, um, we know that we want uh, travelers uh, globally to be able to travel less, uh, but stay longer, spend more, support more, uh, have that transformational experience that, that people are seeking. And we're also looking at the elements of visitor journeys, so breaking down in terms of the, the different parts of how a visitor impacts on the environment in terms of the travel emissions, the uh, consumption issues, based on those individual markets. And I think it's quite an exciting and bold step to take forward to be able to take these baseline measures uh, and move forwards because it gives us that foundation from which we can then um, do so much in identifying how we can put our strategies in place. It was mentioned about the industry research and uh, many of you might have participated in this. Uh, this is to understand uh, how businesses um, uh, respond to uh, finding uh, information sources. It's also about uh, being able to identify the, um, the uh, information required and certainly will again uh, formulate uh, how we approach our strategy in being able to, to formulate um, advice uh, to the industry. And we are continuing, of course, with our consumer research and uh, we've been uh, conducting consumer sentiment work at a, a domestic level and international level to understand uh, people's attitudes towards tourism, where they're going, booking, uh, 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 horizons, uh, uh, you know, attitudes uh, towards destinations. And we've expanded this out, uh, particularly with Scottish residents, to understand more about their attitudes towards communities and also what communities think of tourism, particularly as the economy reopened. So this forms the basis of uh, the work that we're doing. But I would just like to finish off by some of the takeaways that I would give to tourism businesses themselves. Based on the research that we've seen in terms of uh, consumer behavior and uh, the, the, the industry uh, research that we've conducted, firstly, I would say promote your ideals. Next year is the year of Scotland stories. And whilst we can uh, look towards um, the, the myths and legends, which of course are going to form the basis of this, and the new stories and the people that uh, are related to those, it's also an opportunity for businesses to showcase what their values are. So in those sections of your website, which is about us, why don't you be bold and say what you feel about the environment, your local community? Because that's going to align with the type of visitor that wants to come and stay with you. I'd also say the buy and support local is going to be central to that. And uh, certainly uh, Visit Scotland has uh, provided toolkits and support in this area. There's also that providing advice and guidance. Visitors want to do the right thing. We know that they care. And just because they uh, then go on to say that their priority is perhaps uh, value for money and the experience, that doesn't mean that you can't provide advice to them on how they could potentially do things like volunteering, rewilding, litter picking, things like that, which will add an, ex uh, an extra dimension to somebody's trip. But also, it finishes off with that showcase the value for money, because people perceive that the sustainable solution is a more expensive solution. Of course, we know that's not the case, but it's not about um, the, 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 the value. It's about the value for money and the values that you express. So I'd leave you with those as uh, my uh, actions and takeaways and say thank you very much uh, for your time and I'll hand back to, to Janie.
Thank you, Chris. Um, understanding our consumer and industry needs and the overall trends will definitely be key in our journey to net zero. So to look at how we're going to get there, I'm delighted to, to introduce our panel session, which will take a closer look at really what needs to be done. Please welcome my colleague Caroline Warburton, our regional leadership director, who's our host for this session. And can I please ask um, those on the panel to join Caroline on the stage? Good morning, everybody. Do come up, do come up. Gosh, you made it, Dan. I'm so impressed. I think Dan has literally just walked in the door and onto the stage. Hi, Jill. Right, I was going to sit down at the table with you, but I wonder whether I might just stand here and then you've all got a little bit of extra space, perhaps. So, um, well, um, welcome to the panel session. So, my name's Caroline Warburton, and I'm one of the regional leadership directors at Visit Scotland, and I've been asked to, to moderate the session. And um, really, this part of the, uh, the event is really to just kind of drill down on, we've heard a lot about the big picture side of things, we've heard about strategy, but what does that actually mean? And if we're going to be speaking to businesses, and there are businesses here or organizations that work with businesses, how are we going to present this massive task to businesses who quite rightly have had serious priorities um, around the pandemic um, and rebuilding after there. So I'm hoping that we can get some insight from our experts here. Um, in terms of who we've got, you can hopefully see on the screen behind me, but I think as Jamie and John and Rob all said, the, the focus of um, the discussion is on four key themes. So we're going to be looking at energy, we're going to be looking at transport, we're going to be looking at food waste and then certification. So we're going to drill down into those, uh, into those four areas. As you've heard already today, um, we know that the Scottish Government has got this ambitious target to get to net zero by 2045. And for some, they might be thinking, well, that's a long way away. We don't need to worry too much about that. There'll be lots of other stuff that'll be happening and then I can ride on the back of that. And I think as Rob has articulated very clearly, that's not an option for us. We know the Scottish Government has a target for 2030 of 75% net zero. So really, this decade is that decade when we need to demonstrate a real difference from the tourism side of things. And I think that the Glasgow Declaration really illustrates that, the fact that globally there is going to be a declaration which we have signed up to, um, which has Glasgow in the title, um, and it is a decade of action from the tourism industry around climate uh, change. So all the uh, pointers are pointing in the direction that we need to step, out, step up and take action. As an aside, um, I was at a meeting yesterday with the Dundee uh, Tourism Partnership and uh, as a group, as the Dundee Tourism Strategy, the sort of uh, green tourism, sustainable tourism has been on the agenda for a number of years really. Um, but it was yesterday's meeting when that was, there was that real focus on how many people have signed up to green tourism. In Dundee, the number is very low, and they were almost competitive in terms of who has signed up, who's going to sign up, who's got a climate action plan, who's got a net zero plan, and it's a marked difference just in the space of probably six months in terms of the industry really starting to focus. So I'm really optimistic about the way forwards. So, um, enough for me, let's get into some, um, some questions. So, I'm going to start um, with energy, which is perhaps the, the sort of the big ticket that a lot of people are thinking about. So, Erin, um, welcome. Um, so, we know in the headlines that um, Scotland is positioning itself as a world leader in renewable energy. So, and we understand that there's been a huge amount generated through renewable energy. So um, it's all been done for us. We can still consume energy because it's all coming from wind or solar or from other factors. So why should we as tourism businesses be looking at conserving, reducing, changing what we do from an energy perspective? Well, it's actually really great in terms of what Scotland are doing. I think, there are, I believe the last stat I saw was that 97.4% of electricity that's generated in Scotland is renewable. And there's some key things to take from that. First one is that Scotland generates that. It's not the UK, it's Scotland that generates that. 
um, generates is also a really good word that's um, associated with it. That's what's generated. That doesn't necessarily portray in what the demand of Scotland needs and what they need for that. And electricity is also a really good word. So not every business uses solely electricity. And in terms of um, that's Scotland as a whole, and but that's businesses, domestic, every sector. But in terms of businesses, in terms of what they need, they are just behind transport in terms of how much carbon emissions they actually still do generate. There is a whole focus within that. And the businesses in which potentially are here today are potentially that are interested in and moving forward and all businesses should be interested in moving forward into introducing that, um, is that everyone has a part to play, whether that be large or small, and that's whether that's their heating that isn't exactly friendly to our environment um, and changing that and what resources do we have to support people to make that change um, and what can businesses do on the ground to actually impact what they are specifically generating fantastic that Scotland are generating renewable sources, but our businesses themselves making a conscious effort to do that, to contribute overall to the, the carbon reduction. It's fantastic, but there's still a journey to do. So it's as much around reducing what we're using, because consumption is still going up, um, but then also looking at alternative sources. As you say, not everybody's heating their house or their business um, with electricity. Many of us are using oil um, or, or other sources, which we do need to change. I wondered whether the mic was working, actually. I don't know if you can hear very well at the back. No, she was shaking her head. Sorry. There we go. Can you hear Erin now? Okay. Hopefully we'll be, we'll be fine. Okay, right. Let me, moving on to a different topic then. Dan, um, transport. Yes. So. <laughs> That's why I was walking in at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's slightly ironic that the transport speaker was late because of transport, but um, hey-ho. <laughs> Um, so, transport is so integral to the tourism industry, um, we can't get tourists here without using transport, albeit if people decide to walk um, or cycle, um, but it is 25% of Scotland's emissions. So, not all of that is by tourists, I hasten to add, but it is a significant chunk. So, can you give us a bit of an overview on what those national priorities are? Now, I realise this is not tourism specific, but I think from the tourism industry's perspective, it's useful to get a feel for where, where, is, where is the change going to come? And then we can perhaps have a look at how we might play a part in that. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to refer to numbers here, notes, because there are a lot of numbers and dates. Don't want to mix them up. Um, I've often used the wrong year. So, you know, sometimes the goals don't look as aggressive as they really are. Um, so, yeah, the Scottish Government has a, a committed to, to quite a few... Um, as I said, fairly aggressive goals. I mean, the, the first one that's a part of the National Transportation Strategy and their climate change plan is uh, reducing car miles by 20% by 2030. Um, and you know, that sounds like a bit of a, a throwaway claim, is you know, how is the government actually going to be able to do that, um, reducing car miles? And you know, that's through a number of different ways, but the main one is just getting people out of cars and using other modes that are available. Um, you know, this goes hand in hand with a five million pound investment to support active travel um, and providing those other options uh, to sort of try and get people considering the other ways of um, getting to where they need to be. So I guess the, the, the other big one um, is the phase out the need for new petrol and diesel cars by 2030. And that's really not that far away. So effectively the goal there is to you know, make sure that you know, you're actually your purchasing options for new cars are just not going to be petrol and diesel. Well, and you won't have the need to do that. So, you know, I mean, there is a, we'll have to keep an eye out for the mechanisms to achieve that. And currently there are supply chain challenges, you know, even if you do want the electric vehicles. So um, there's a few hurdles to get through. But the one that's maybe a little bit more relevant and closer to tourism and travel is um, phasing out the need for new light commercial petrol and diesel vehicles by 2025, which is far more immediate. And I think when this was drafted, we weren't quite aware of the sort of impact on supply chains of us all shopping online and all of a sudden having all these last mile deliveries. So it makes that goal in particular far more significant. Um, and I know there's sort of a lot of research into, you know, into the whole supply chain about how we um, enable that again in the next few years. We really don't have long. Uh, the other one that's probably the most, one of the largest sort of initiatives by the government is working on, heavy, focusing on heavy duty vehicles, 
because they also you know, are one of the major contributors that includes everything from the buses to the, the logistics and freight is probably the biggest sector. Um, it's probably worth being aware that those groups are actively you know, working on how they're converting those vehicles and making them net zero. Um, and I know it's not public just yet, it will be in the next, next couple of weeks. Um, the Scottish Wholesalers Association, for example, you know, is developing a roadmap to decarbonisation. So, you know, it may not be visible to you on a day-to-day -day basis, but, you know, all of these fleets are working on their plans and strategies to get to net zero, um, aligning with these sort of government goals. So it is kind of a group effort. Um, everyone's involved and there are, there are you know, many ways all of us can play a role in that. Um, the other one, yeah, another ones that are very relevant to travel and tourism <coughs> is the uh, decarbonising scheduled flights by 2040. I think that one's huge. <laughs> so, you know, we, we have experimental hydrogen and electric flights happening around Scotland, so it, it's not just a wish. There is, you know, investment being made into sort of testing, trialling, piloting, developing the innovations that are needed to make this happen. Uh, and the other one is, yeah, you would have seen public transport. There's been some fairly big investments in collaboration with people like First Bus and Alexander Dennis to start you know, deploying large fleets of electric buses here in Scotland as well, but actually here in Glasgow. So um, yeah, lots of those on the streets, and I'm, I'm sure they're around <laughs> if you look out for them. Yeah, so that's just some of the sort of different ways that this is happening. Um, the goals are aggressive, and it's a collaborative effort. Yeah, those are, those are short timescales, really short timescales. Yeah. And I think there's, of, often we look at it from a public transport perspective, but I think those supply chain issues are going to be massive. Yeah, I think they've just sector. amplified the, the goal, but um, doesn't make it insurmountable. Yeah. We'll get it done. Great. Thanks very much, Dan. Um, moving to food waste, so uh, looking to, um, to Jill from Zero Waste Scotland. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, we throw away a lot of things. Um, and food is one part of that. So we've heard a lot about plastics and lots of other things. So why, from um, a tourism perspective, why is it important that we focus on food waste? What is it that's significant about food waste and climate change? So uh, thanks very much for the invitation. Uh, Zero Waste Scotland is funded is that, by... Is that mic working? I can project. Sorry. No, not at all. Can you hear me now? Uh, on mute, as we've all been talking about for the last 18 months. Um, so thank you very much. It's great to see people in carbon <coughs> form again. And Zero Waste Scotland, as I was saying, is funded by Scottish Government. Sorry, this is uncomfortable. And uh, we exist to create society in Scotland where there is zero waste. And that's not just for um, the, the sake of the environment, actually uh, having a zero waste economy means that no resources are wasted. So that's good for civic society, it's good for the environment, and it's good financially. So we talk about the circular economy as a means to achieving uh, zero waste. So the linear economy, the old economy, is you take, you use, you dispose. The circular economy is much more about considering the carbon impact of every resource that you use. So can you use something that's not a finite material? Can you use an alternative material? Can you create services or um, design uh, products in a way that they can be reused and repurposed? And at the very sort of least bad option is, can you make it as recyclable as possible? So it's keeping everything in um, economic use as long as possible. And one of the things that we've been working on recently is the deposit return scheme, which will impact the, the hospitality se sector. I raise a uh, the DRS, a deposit return scheme, because for every kilogram of waste, of food waste that's generated, that's equivalent to 25,000 plastic bottles going to landfill from a carbon perspective. So we've got a campaign on just now with Rankin the photographer, which shows um, food waste in the shape of plastic bottles, but for every kilogram of food waste, that's 25,000 tonnes of uh, 25,000 plastic bottles going to landfill. So, in terms of the environment, it has a massive impact. There's unavoidable food waste, of course, there is, there's peelings, things like that. But putting those to one side, uh, businesses uh, can, everybody wants to do the right thing. We run a food waste reduction um, service at Zero Waste Scotland. Um, currently run the, the energy efficiency service. Businesses want to do the right thing. 
for the planet, but also because it saves money. We worked with over 300 businesses uh, over the past few years with the food waste reduction campaign. And in addition to saving tens of thousands of tonnes of carbon, businesses have saved over £8 million. Pounds. So the, the way that we help businesses uh, is helping with behaviour change. In order to change your behaviours, it's helping a business target the areas where most food waste is generated, measure the impact of that food waste that's generated, and then create an action plan to help change that uh, behaviour. So there's a toolkit that will be uh, launched on the Zero Waste Scotland website by the end of November, uh, which will help uh, companies go on and self-serve the Target Measure Act uh, areas of intervention. But we've also been working, as was mentioned earlier, uh, with Visit Scotland and Scottish Enterprise around the Hospitality Zero uh, service, which will be launching again, hopefully, in January. Um, and you know, we're, we're open to companies coming to us and uh, finding out more about that. And the Plate Up for Glasgow initiative that's happening uh, in Glasgow, Glasgow at the moment, the clues in the title, uh, around COP26, where a number of leading uh, organisations, tourism organisations in Glasgow are featuring at least one item on their menu which has minimal food waste associated with it. So, you know, the, the call to action is very clear. You can save money, you can help save the environment. And also, you know, increasingly you see uh, tourists, employees, are all considering the environment as part of their decision making about which companies they want to work for, which institutions they want to frequent. Uh, so the time is actually now, it's very real, there's lots of support out there and uh, in terms of your businesses it can save you money and can also make you more attractive to, to visitors and consumers. So why not? Thanks Jill, thank you. you, you um moves me very neatly on to my next question, which is aimed at Andrea, so thank you for that. So, Andrea, you've got a huge amount of experience through the green tourism, so we are so fortunate in Scotland to have the world's leading green tourism accreditation, certification scheme, sorry, um, in the world, and it's based here in Scotland. You know, we really should be celebrating that. Is it two and a half thousand members, I believe, you've got? So, which is, a, which is fantastic. So, we've heard about waste, we've heard about energy, we've heard about transport. So from a tourism perspective, why, what are the benefits for tourism, for tourism businesses, and Jill alluded to them, in terms of why should they manage, look at these uh, areas? And I suppose moving on to this uh, certification piece, um, why, what does certification add to that journey that uh, businesses are going to be on? Thanks, Caroline. Killer questions there. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, it's interesting because everyone's using the word certification, and that's not really what we in green tourism think of ourselves. Yes, ultimately, it's about providing support and advice and, and accrediting or providing a, an award for a business at the, at the end of it. But actually, it's about taking businesses on a green journey. And people come to us for at various stages in their green journey, not knowing where to start, I, you know, they're completely overwhelmed by the issues around energy or waste or transport and they don't know where to actually start. So what we in Green Tourism provide is a sustainable framework for businesses to use so they can come in at whatever level they're, they're currently starting at and we give them practical, sensible, uh, um, achievable, cost-effective measures that they can do based around a framework. We have three pillars, people, places and planet, and we have 15 sustainability goals split into very easy to digest and, and understand so that businesses can, can implement their green commitment in, in a way that's relevant for their business, for their market. And I think that's where certification or business development programmes, which is what we prefer to call ourselves, is giving that uh, framework and structure for businesses to know what to do next. There's also an issue around greenwashing, and a lot of businesses we talk to say, we, we, we're doing a lot, we, we really think we're, we're, we're a, a green business, but actually we need somebody to come in who's independent to actually validate that, provide us some, some just suggestions of where we could do more, and actually award us with a, a recognised, internationally recognised uh, certification logo that we can use to promote to our customers. And there is a customer demand. I 
Chris has some great stats on, on you know, the ch changing trends in, in, in tourism and what people are looking for. And no, you're not going to make lots of money by saying I am uh, just a responsible business because actually what the customers are looking for is everything that's integrated within sustainable tourism, which is that authentic, the local, the, uh, the caring for the community, caring for the people that you work with. All of that is, is really important. And actually, even pre-COVID, there was trends changing trends in terms of slow travel and low carbon travel. But through COVID, what we've seen is a massive change in people feeling part of more of a global um, family because we've all experienced it. Everyone across the whole world has experienced it. And that connection between people and the health of the planet and the health of people has become really, really important. So we've taken the opportunity through COVID to completely redesign our approach and there's much more around caring for people within that. And what we've seen from the businesses we're working with is that there is a demand. There's a demand from customers who want to have that authentic local and understand that the businesses that they're visiting or staying with are caring for the community, caring for the planet. And that word care is really important, that's become crucial. And I think there's also a, a massive change in terms of meetings and events. Um, we were very lucky to, to launch earlier this year our Green Meeting Standard. And we did that in partnership with Visit Scotland because that, there's a massive demand from clients who want to have a, a greener conference. It's become an absolute demand. So the meeting show um, did some research and showed 92% of event professionals. I was going to say this is going to be an essential part of actually achieving uh, or gaining business if you're an events or meetings um, business. Um, we launched yesterday uh, with the MIA, a partnership, so the Meetings Industry Association. So they're going to be promoting that sustainability element to meetings and events. So if, you, if you're working in that, in that marketplace, if you haven't got that, it's going to be crucial for your business going forward. And I think Chris mentioned this as well. Uh, one of the most important things that we find with businesses is giving them the opportunity and encouraging them to tell their green story. Many, many businesses we work with are doing a lot. And, and since we started 25 years ago, there's a lot more that they are doing that they were doing back then because of the support through so <coughs> Waste Scotland and Energy Trust and people like that. It, you know, LED lights didn't even exist 25 years ago. But what people aren't doing as well as they could do is actually telling their green story, engaging with their customers, engaging with their community. And what, one of the things that these certification or business development programs provide is that structure and framework to, for them to be confident to tell the green story. And it's everyone's on a different place in their green journey. So being transparent, being honest, and telling visitors, guests, suppliers, all of your stakeholders what you're doing and where you are on that green journey is a crucial part of it. And it's what the customers wanting to look, wanting to see and hear and understand that the businesses that they're, they're working with or they're, they're staying with are actually contributing back to making Scotland a greener destination. Thank you. That was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Very full answer. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I think that sort of the external validation piece, I think, has been a key bit from the, the standard perspective, but I think also is, is that kind of knowing where to start. This is completely overwhelming from a business perspective. You know, should I be focusing on energy? Should I be focusing on water? And I think what green tourism does and other initiatives and a lot of the, the support that is available here is helps to kind of start. And that's what we all need to do. We all need to just start doing activity. So, Dan, I'm going to come back to you from a transport perspective, because uh, following on from Andrew's comment about telling the story, so from a transport perspective, I think it's often, unless you are a transport provider or you have transport within your business, the transport piece can seem a little bit distant, um, but yet yeah, all of our guests will be coming by transport from one form or the other. So, I suppose, what advice would you give to a tourism business around how do we, as the industry, communicate the transport piece to our customers. Um, is that what, what would you say we should be doing more of? Um, I think, can I have three options? <laughs> so the, the, the first one that comes to mind, I mean, basically around your supply chain. It's as simple as, you know, even just asking the question of your suppliers as to, you know, what are they, what, what are they doing from a, you know, a, a going green perspective, um, you know, maybe it's a certification, whatever it might be. I mean, it might be a case of, you know, folded into your procurement and part of your decision making. If you end up with two quotes for something that are the same, which one's greener? 
I mean, does, does that help make that decision? And I think even just asking the question prompts companies to start considering it and realising that, that, that it's something you're thinking about. Um, I think that can be fairly impactful. As far as sort of the, the, the travellers um, that are coming to Scotland, I was, I was recently in Hamburg, um, used I think, two or three different apps to move around the city, usually with a taxi or car share of some kind, and every single one of them provided me an electric option. So it wasn't just order the taxi, it's like, do you want a diesel taxi or do you want an electric one? So just little things like that, providing those options and making them available to you know, people that are visiting or using your services um, has a significant impact. And I think most people are going to be happy to choose the more you know, environmentally friendly one. Um, so, you know, I mean, the, it's, it's often not big things you need to do. It can be really small steps um, that sort of make those options more visible and available to the, to the people coming to Scotland. Uh, the third one is, Another hat I wear is, is, the, is uh, leading the Sustainable Mobility Cluster Builder in Scotland. We kind of lead innovative SMEs and start building a community around you know, solving some of these uh, transportation challenges, particularly as it relates to the, the climate goals here in Scotland. Um, and I guess it's kind of a request, actually. <laughs> it's like, if you get an opportunity to become a part of a pilot or a demo program, something that looks a little bit experimental, please embrace it. Um, it benefits you, it might take some resources and a little bit more commitment, but it means that you get to experience what's coming down the pipeline. Um, and it may, you know, maybe when it comes to the point where you make a, a decision to sort of leap into you know, environmentally friendly, you're just better armed, you end up with better knowledge because of that experience. Um, so keep an open mind if those opportunities come your way. And if you want to actively get involved, reach out. Right. Thank you, Dan. Um, right, my last question, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to go back to um, Erin. So just from um, an energy perspective, in terms of there is support out there for businesses, um, where should they start? Is there a, something that they should focus on, small steps, big steps? Some of the investment is enormous that's going to be needed to, to move people away from um, uh, carbon-heavy heating or energy use. What would be your advice to them? Well, I hope you can hear me now, because it's probably the more important part that you want to hear <laughs> me say. Um, but I am from the Energy Efficiency Business Support Service, a long name, I know. Um, but what, what we do, and it's a really, really great starting point for Scottish SMEs, is we will support you in identifying the, the measures that we think you should implement in your site to be more energy efficient. Now, a lot of the barriers, and we spoke a little bit about the barriers today in terms of what businesses generally have, and a lot of the time it's time, a lot of the time it's finance, and a lot of the time it's knowledge, and we hopefully are able to overcome a lot of those barriers with the support we give, and the fact that hopefully it won't take much of your time to have a conversation with us and have that first step about what it is you use and what alternatives are there that are better for your bottom line, uh, ultimately that's a, a massive thing, we're, we're, no, we're no shy about us talking about a global pandemic in terms of how that might have affected a tourism business and how that then feeds on to your energy usage and your carbon footprint, which are all big phrases that we like to use now. We will provide that independent support. Um, that is a, a consultant will visit your site, they'll, they'll put together a report which is free for Scottish SMEs and it's the first step in terms of getting that information and knowing what to do with that, how do you then build a, a business strategy around that support and um, how do you start identifying what it is that you want to do and we'd like to hope that you then go on to implement that and we want to be able to support you in implementing that so we, we do have a couple of funding options and I'll, I'll just briefly give you an overview of them because the numbers, there's, there's a few of them, we spoke a lot about numbers today, I don't want to bombard you with too many, but if you do want to implement that and we, the recommendation that we, we, we give businesses and we most certainly encourage you to do so, um, we do offer through Energy Savings Trust and with our programme at Zero Waste Scotland, the, um, an interest free SME loan. Now that is to implement the measures that we've provided on our report and there's also some fantastic cashback offers and the big one, and which is the one that we were wanting to move a lot of people in, is using renewables. So um, a renewable heat system, such as an air source heat pump, a ground source heat pump, or solar thermal, if you move your heating system to that and you want to implement that, 75% of that can be given as a cashback grant. It's capped at £10,000 per enterprise, but substantial. Makes the payback 
a lot, lot shinier and a lot more um, attractive, especially when it comes to the cost benefit of these systems. And then the other ones based on things like building fabric and your lighting, things that we want to make sure the building is sound enough to be able to retain the heat in which we want you to generate. And there's a 30% cash back on that, again capped at £10,000. I hope that these supports, um, well, we, um, um, we are hopeful that they work together very collaboratively with other potential funding revenues that will be, that will be discussed in the um, future. But that's a little overview and it's a first step, I think, in being able for these businesses to make that transition associated with many of the other support tools that we do have available to transition into. Once businesses start discussing this with us, a lot of them then come to us and say, EVs next, what can I do? There's a route for that now. We know that food waste, what can we do? There's a route for that as well. And the green credentials, going back to what Andrea said about, we don't want them to be greenwashing. And ultimately, that's exactly what we're minimising. We're minimising this greenwashing. Those headline figures are that businesses alone to talk about what their savings are, not that 97.4% of Scottish renewables or LHSA is renewable generated. It's their own headline figures. And I think that speaks a lot of truth um, more than anything else. Thank you, and that brings us nicely back to where we started. So, um, uh, beautifully done. Thank you very much. Right, I'm, I'm in between you and a cup of coffee, so um, that is the end of our panel session. Um, we only had half an hour, and with four speakers, we would really only scratch the surface. We could probably have a conference on each of these four topics, I imagine. Um, but hopefully, it provides uh, just a reminder, as much as anything, of the urgency to try and move forwards on this. There is help available, and as Rob announced, there will be more help, financial support available um, in all of these areas for tourism businesses, um, and to keep an eye on, I presume it will be on visitscotland.org um, in future weeks. So um, if I can just thank Erin, um, Andrea, Dan and Jill um, for their time this morning, and um, I will hand back to Jamie. Yes, thank you. Um, a massive thank you to our panel and to Caroline. It's really knowing where to start and taking action can be a bit of daunting at first, so it's really good to get a little bit of insight and there's so much information out there on what to do and, and that there is help available and what help is available. So um, as Caroline mentioned, there is um, upcoming support around in a lot of these areas, so um, do keep an eye out for that. But that shouldn't stop you from getting started. The advice and support is available right now, as we just heard.